quite distracting if there is noise. Why think of distant lands when uh, nice things are so near is the beautiful title of the next talk. And I don't know if you knew it, but DE6 is the largest internet node in the world. But as they say, where there is data, the secret services show up. And in Germany, uh, concretely, it's the BND, the German Secret Service, which wants to and does um, take data from there. And the maintainers um, of the DE6 um, have sued uh, on this topic and want to stop that. And the next presenter is... Um, the CEO, uh, or no, is sorry, is in the, is in the, uh, it's on the board. On the board, thank you, of the DE6. So thanks, and I'm going to do a dis disclaimer, much like everybody else, except I am talking for my employers. I am speaking and presenting the views of my employer. So, we're not going to be talking about surveillance, but it's going to be about putting this surveillance into a context. Well, and I think there's been some misinformation in some of the talks here and um, about what works and what's going on. So, let's start. Um, what's the problem? And um, what's going on with surveillance? And it's clear the courts have a clear um, stance here. And it's um, important that the perception of freedom of the citizens may not be um, surveilled. And the German government should actually work towards this freedom all over the world. And um, that's something I cannot see. And um, one of our, and our Minister of the Interior actually said it's not uh, the, uh, the job of the courts to constantly obstruct the, the legislative in terms of security. And he said that after um, uh, yet another law was sort of uh, torpedoed by the courts. But that's the uh, tensions we're moving around in. What do our laws say? What's, what, what's the legal situation in Germany and internationally? Um, and... Uh, so the European Court of Justice has uh, taken a clear stance on this. And um, that was 2014, the uh, uh, judgment on uh, mass data retention, and they said clearly um, this is um, that you can um, get a lot of information from the totality of this metadata. So all of these things, and so the, the metadata, like where have you communicated, who have you, who have you communicated to, on the, on the uh, 22nd of December, um, said also im Prinzip oder beziehungsweise für unzulässig erklärt wurde. Dort hat das EuGH ganz klar gesagt, ähm, Leute, so geht das nicht. They once again said we cannot uh, do that and we cannot um, indiscriminately retain data about everyone. There has to be a cause, it has to be targeted. Sadly, it's not about the law we have right now in Germany. It was part of a, a check about something in Denmark, Denmark and uh, the UK. And of course, well, a lot of this stuff is being misunderstood. There's these targeted measures and um, these are uh, about a person. There is some sort of cause. And usually these are supported by a service provider who is forced to um, provide some 
uh, information, legal interception as it's called in English. And technically, uh, data re mass data retention and uh, uh, cell phone uh, location information is part of that. Um, and that's actually the only thing that uh, works automatically. Um, but it's also um, malware attacks and exploits, and all of these things uh, require a warrant from a court, which explains why and how and what you're going to do. And um, the only the, only the FBI, the FBI had, with the help of the BND, uh, not FBI, the German FBI, with the uh, equivalent of the FBI, with the uh, BND, uh, could could uh, use use the BND to support uh, detection of uh, at, at attacks on computer systems. And then, and then there are the uh, the broader, un, untargeted uh, strategic uh, surveillance uh, laws. What 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 does uh, strategic means? Is, is uh, like something distant, like um, Thailand. This is only for um, uh, external um, threats or external uh, objects. Uh, so, talking about um, this is also about long distance, uh, long haul communications that pass through uh, through Germany. And then for the protection of uh, cyber attacks. They also need a warrant from a judge. That's often a misunderstanding. So people often think that there's, or it's a misapprehension that, that people think that there's that uh, there's no ability to look over us. It would be legal to uh, simply, um, without a cause, um, surveil someone. Uh, there is no legal basis for that at the moment in Germany. But there has been a systematic broadening of uh, capacities in Germany after Snowden, and that's uh, a shame, but that's what it is right now. And so first there was a uh, law to improve the com collaboration uh, in on the topic of uh, the secret or of the constitutional protection service, which is much like the German um, uh, internal security. Um, Sadly, there was a part in this law which was about tele telecommunication surveillance, and it um, it's the law that introduced um, mass surveillance in Germany, and it's the law that also, um, uh, especially for cybercrime, allows the surveillance of internet um, backbone. Then there was the law um, uh, which forced. Uh, a retention duty and a maximum retention time for metadata. And right now, the, there's the case that this law is going to take effect the day after tomorrow. But because of the European Court of Justice judgment, it's essentially, it's materially invalid. So it's, it's still on the books because um, uh, only our uh, constitutional court or the parliament can can uh, strike it from the books, but it is not going to have any effect. Um, and perhaps somebody would have to take it to the courts uh, to, to, to force that, but it should be invalid. And then there is the um, law for um, uh, law for foreign uh, country to foreign country telecom teleco telecommunication surveillance. And we should have a, a, a minute of quiet, a minute of silence right now, because today it took effect. Today it was public, publicized in the official channel and is taking effect. 
So what's the position of the security um, uh, agencies? agencies? Uh, currently, we don't have effective measures against global terrorism and cyber threats. We only figure out what happens after it happens, and it's tricky to figure out where it comes from, and if we don't retain all that data, then we don't know where it came from. And of course, there, to be fair, there is a discrepancy between the um, security uh, agencies and the secret services, and they work very differently. And um, the security agencies, the law enforcement agencies, uh, need to have everything that they that they get as uh, must be available as evidence in a court. And the secret services, well, they don't really care that much because uh, it it's important to have that data, but um, you don't have to have that um, standard of being able to use it on a course. What both of these have as a problem is going dark as a problem. Um, and that comes from device and service encryption. And so that's actually what happened. So we see this um, very precisely uh, after Snowden, that the, the amount of uh, devices that are being encrypted actually has gone up a lot after Snowden. Uh, by over 50%. There's a large, large appalls, appalls. Uh, Unfortunately, there still are some things that, that, that don't support this or that work against this. Mostly, most of that new encrypted traffic goes to the big services, but even in email, we've seen a rise in encrypted uh, communications. And the law enforcement agencies um, are clearly of the opinion that we need systematic uh, meta metadata to um, find relations. And that's the first step that the law enforcement agencies take. Well, I find very interesting that it's per the people always think it's not so important, but then you, you look in the, the actual uh, law books um, in 206. And you can find there paragraph 206, which um, specifically says that um, there is a telecommunication secret where you're, it's illegal um, to... Um, uh, that, and it doesn't differentiate between different types of telecommunications, whether it's a letter or a phone call or an email. It, the law says it's illegal um, to uh, look at both the content and the metadata. But, of course, it's treated differently. Uh, metadata is generally not encrypted, and keeping those hidden is ex takes a huge amount of effort, and you can basically only do it through Tor or something, and otherwise they're just there. But as we can see, clearly there shouldn't be a difference, and it really shouldn't be okay that in the new, new uh, laws, we actually do differentiate, even though the basic law says no difference. So then there is a global trend, um, mass, um, mass tracking and filtering. And the services are trying um, to systematically um, gain bulk access and create selectors about everything. It's about content too, in our case, always about, uh, always only with a warrant from a law, from a justice, uh, from a judge, but not in every other country. And um, of course, it's also about, um, uh, about direct um, access and uh, automatic selectors. And everything, is, cloud drives, everything is being tried they're trying to connect with an automatic connector and uh, access automatically. 
What's even more problematic is what I would call the um, causeless um, mass surveillance in combination with retention. Um, and that's what's done where that's the case where um, they just save everything. Um, everything that's going through some, some cable, they don't even look at it, they just save it all. Um, and then they can roll back and, and look at stuff from the past and they can say, oh, who has he been talking to? What services has he been using? And that's the kind of um, security service, secret service big data that I that I have a big problem with. And that's what they use to build up, you know, what social circles is somebody moving in. And on the same um, level, there's the spy software, Trojans, malware, spyware, which um, belongs to states. And this isn't a new thing, obviously. I don't have to tell anyone here. But often that spyware comes from uh, state sources. So, so let's see how we can look at what specifically in German we can talk about. For the after after the G10, there was a small um, things effective. So there was a 20% increase. Um, it's limited to 20% of the capacity of uh, the cable that they're allowed to uh, surveil according to G10. So this, and they need to have a, a, a permit that they have to have checked every three months. And it's kind of weird to say that, you know, I will know what I'll be looking for in three months. But that's where these selectors show up. And um, at the same time, uh, they're arguing that, of course, they need to be able to dynamically change these selectors. Um, and that's why those selectors aren't actually written into these permits. Um, and these very targeted selectors aren't permitted. They're, it's not permitted to search for anything that is specific to a single person that you can attribute to someone. Um, it has to be something general, some concept or something. Um, and it shouldn't be anything that is um, part of the core privacy, the core part of uh, your lifestyle. And, and all of that must be deleted immediately. That's, That's what the law says. So what, is, what, what must the BND do? What is their job? The uh, job of the BND, the F Federal Secret Service, this is the official uh, job of the BND, is to, um, so to provide them with uh, comprehensive information at the right time, uh, to provide his clients at the right time with comprehensive information. And that's about important political, economical, but also technical um, uh, developments, military information, and of course, abstract and concrete threats to the security of um, the state of Germany and their citizens. And what does, what threatens them? Well, anything really. So what, what exactly is the, uh, does, does this mean the security of the Bundesrepublik and the, and the citizens? Uh, here's, here are the things they're looking at specifically. Um, international ter terrorism, weapons profilization, um, collapse of, uh, of states, um, um, and uh, resource uh, crises and, and, and issues. So the international uh, terrorism is obviously a large one. So things such as in Af Afghanistan, and uh, I'm not really sure what they mean when they talk about the uh, uh, setting the uh, resource conflicts. Resource conflicts. Um, regional targets at the moment are um, Western Central Asia, 
uh, uh, the Middle East, um, North, North Africa, which doesn't really fit with all those selectors we found about Western Europe, but, you, you know, somehow they can justify it. Um, of course, um, they have some interesting interpretations, like the open sky interpretation. So, um, they claim that they are acting in foreign space because the satellites are in space and that's where they're collecting the data. They're only uh, uh, verifying or um, investigating it in Germany. So they can use all of that data for everything. Only um, they have to have that filter to um, protect the basic rights of Germans. And um, there's also the virtual um, virtual being abroad in Frankfurt. Um, the DS6 is a connector for various international um, networks, and there's carriers from lots and lots of different countries, and all of these cables are connected to foreign countries, and that's why it's virtually abroad and not Germany. I cannot follow that argumentation. I don't think that that's really the case, but that's the theory um, that they uh, worked on, and that's how they um, convinced the G10 committee that this should be okay. And um, if they hadn't managed to do that, they couldn't have been active um, at the DE6. And, well, of course, the trouble is that uh, we don't know if there's actually German customers behind all of these foreign uh, carriers. And we can't tell that, we can't see that. So it's it's hard to value that or measure that. Um, so to find German customers in uh, in foreign carriers is, is probably impossible or, or ineffective. So... Currently, it's um, not possible to, um, until tomorrow, uh, to ask for uh, data without a cause. Um, but, of course, um, there's a lot of problem with that. And especially, um, we have the, 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 the case of the uh, foreign country to foreign country um, transit traffic. And um, that's something we have a lot of and that they want because they say, well, that's, um, and they, they, they claim there is no law that prohibits them from getting that. Um, so we can take it. It's legal, right? Um, but of course, um, the basic law says in Article 10 that uh, telecommunications are to be safe and it's illegal to tamper with them. Um, and if it doesn't specifically say um, it's it's uh, it's permitted, then you're not permitted to do it. And here they're saying the opposite. They're saying it's not prohibited, so clearly it's permitted. And when the BND came to us in 2008, 2009, um, they said, you know, we're going to do that. And I can only tell you that because the uh, NSA um, investigation committee asked about that, otherwise this wouldn't be public, they wouldn't be allowed to talk about this. So, um, they, they, they said, um, uh, this isn't about cables, uh, this, is, this is, you know, we're doing a packet orientation, that, that there's no there's no cable um, with connection to the to, to foreign countries. Uh, so how do we apply this uh, G10 law? Um, okay, so so um, how do we do with the uh, deal with the twenty percent limit? Um, the old law is, says, well, okay, you've got uh, a, a, a thousand um, connections on on this cable, right? Because that's how many com com connections it can carry. So you take twenty percent of that. That's two hundred, and that's what you're allowed to take. And in, in this case, um, you know, how do we measure? Because we could have traffic and then all the stuff that they're really interested in um, is, is really a tiny percentage of the, the um, 
uh, actual capacity because stuff like WhatsApp take, doesn't take up a lot of bandwidth. So if you have a gigabit connection, you know, um, that's not a lot. But if you're looking at um, if you're looking at the traffic we get through, then it's 30 to 50 percent, which is up to double um, of, of that, and then it wouldn't be okay. And uh, yeah, so they're they're claiming that they only want um, bandwidth limited stuff, so they're always going to be fine. So I've already said. So it's hard to, to separate things from the, the to separate out the international traffic from the national traffic. So. It's it's unfortunately we the, the the selection and the filtering has to uh, has to happen after the, the after the the connection after we stored the data and so you know we can't um, we already stored it which is already not okay but so how you know how do we. Uh, ensure that Article 10 is satisfied, what specifically do we look at, you know, the, uh, do we look at the headers or what level? And um, we, we asked all the way back then, and um, then the, the chancellor, uh, Chancellor's Agency answered and said, yeah, sure, it's all legal. Of course, that was 20, 2009 and the world was um, different, and uh, here I'm going to have to take part of the blame and, and, and we got the order and we said, yeah, all right, I guess we, we believe you. And then the uh, NSA investigation committee was formed and um, first thing was we got a couple of constitutional lawyers and um, they said, well, <clears throat> basic laws, that applies to everyone and um, not just specifically Germans and that open sky thing, that's that's just crap. That you you that doesn't stand up. And I haven't found a single constitutional lawyer who would follow that argumentation. And I've talked to a lot of them. And the um, data filtering system, which was supposed to uh, protect the basic rights, is really really basic itself, and it's way worse than anybody thought. And it. So they put together the IP list themselves without uh, using international registrars, um, and so the the accuracy of the filter was uh, much lower than expected. So, so the uh, the data party officer of the of the the uh, federal federal police. That it was said that it was impossible. So they didn't filter all the uh, traffic from Germans. So it it failed, and the data protection um, uh, officer uh, of the state uh, said that's not okay. So it went uh, as far as the 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 leader of the G10 Commission. Um, getting up in front of the um, investigative committee and saying this is highly, highly dishonest. And uh, without the, the order from the G10, um, you couldn't have come to us and, and asked for that data. There was no um, legal basis for that. And there were cases where data was, even without these orders, even without a warrant, um, saved for, stored for longer than, than is legal, and metadata was, was even saved up to the 14th hop, and the 14th degree. And um, there's this theory that six degrees would be sufficient for everything. So, and now we're suing um, against those G10 orders. And we we had that investigated by someone who really knows his stuff. And... Right. And the, our expert clearly stated that Article 10 is a human right, not a German's right. And um, the Constitution uh, already takes effect when... Uh, uh, 
German service is acting. And of course, you could say, you know, our constitution uh, applies everywhere, but that's taking a bit it a bit far. But at the very least, when a German service um, is acting in the interior of our country, it, it should count. Well, the chancellor's uh, agency said doesn't see it that way. And our expert also basically concluded by saying uh, all of these orders are in total invalid. And that confirms all of our uh, concerns from 2009. And uh, we, we have to sue against this because if, if we don't do that, I mean, basically we're breaking the law in doing so. And uh, well, that that's still ongoing. Um, we we're fighting that. The federal government hasn't been able to uh, reply. They're, they're still blackening all the, censoring all the data. And now we're a little step ahead um, because we, we got to see some of the, the those files uh, while others have been uh, denied seeing that. Uh, okay. Um, the basic question of do you have sta legal standing is, is of course a given in our case. So this is going to go uh, in front of the court, definitely. Um, we'll have to see whether this will get moved to the uh, court in Karlsruhe from the court in Leipzig, but we'll, we'll see about that. But so now um, they've come up with a law which is going to turn this whole thing legal. And um, there's been a long discussion about whether we could reform uh, G10. And then the, uh, the, 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 the suit would have come too late. Um, and there was a political discussion about reforming G10. And so um, they just cut that debate short and beginning of June they come up they came up with that um, law about um, foreign country to foreign country telecommunication um, surveillance. So there's currently no exception for um, for uh, transit um, carriers and they were proposing to fill that hole. Um, because currently doesn't sta is not within the the law. So there's the intent is to separate things between EU and German and other uh, and other foreigners. Uh, but that can't be because the the, the our rules don't 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 separate that. Um, this would mean a completely new uh, control instance aside from the parliamentary controls and it would also allow uh, passing data on to partner services. And this control instance should um, should surveil more things but in less depth, less information. And of course all the things that they're doing should be legalized. So all the things we're criticizing and attacking should be legalized. And there's a nice quote um, from the um, State Secretary of State who's in charge of that, uh, Klaus-Dieter Fritsche. And when we're talking about the question of uh, legal stability for the employees of the BND versus the um, uh, lawfulness um, of, of these uh, activities as seen by the citizens, well, for me, it's clear that the legal stability, legal clarity for the employees of the BND is more important to me. And I personally think that is a very questionable statement from a Secretary of State. So, um, this um, question of is it connected to the uh, to foreign countries is eliminated completely. It 
um, uses the definition of a network from the telecommunications law. So all the connections, all the routers, everything that is connected, that's the network. And so now I don't have to say this cable, that's what we're about. That's connected from us to England, and that's why we as a foreign intelligence service uh, should do this. Um, now they can say, well, we want this network, but we want the foreign traffic. And that's, uh, you know, who, who can say what is connected to the foreign countries because of all of these um, services abroad. And now everything is foreign traffic. And... Um, they, 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 they dump themselves down to, 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 um, they went from the capacity limit to, um, saying basically, well, it's okay if you only take a tiny percentage of the worldwide traffic, which is literally in there. And, you know, if the budgets, budgets can be changed, if, if they need more money to surveil a certain network, well, then, you know, they can spend more ammo. They, 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 suddenly they might have a huge, huge budget for surveilling certain bits. And, and the, the, all those agencies can basically go to a network um, and do what is called a technical um, discussion and then decide, well, that's what we're interested in and take of that. And um, the extent of that surveillance is not um, controlled anymore. There's no oversight anymore. It's not part of the process anymore at all. So the only thing that protects us, even as, you know, Germans, is... Um, the filtering system, which has already been criticized multiple times, this DAFIS system um, is going to um, provide the protection for all the um, internal connections as well. And uh, it used to be, you know, cables with overwhelming um, connection to foreign countries, but nope, now it's everything. So this is elementary and absolutely decisive. The classification and everything happens entirely under the control of the service. Um, it's going to be grabbed at the carrier, sent to the, ser to the agency and uh, filtered there. And there's no oversight at all. The extent, what is being looked for, how does it work, no oversight, no parliamentary control at all. They can even, you know, turn it off for for um, uh, six months in order to test uh, traffic flows or determine new things about the traffic and figure out how well the system can handle that. And they may not use the results of this uh, of this examination, except, of course, if they find something that is um, relevant. So all the things that they're supposed to look for, they can still um, use. And, you know, they can just turn off the filtering for six months, and that's an internal thing, and nobody else that just happens inside of the, the, the service. There's no, con no oversight at all, not even within the government. And that's the big problem here. No basic uh, right protection at all. And so what should the, what does the filter system do? Um, uh, fundamentally, the three things. There'll be an IP filter based that, that provides geolocation, um, a, a, a protocol filters, um, and uh, so uh, being able to filter out video or, ch uh, or streaming things that aren't interesting, for example, chats and emails are generally much more uh, email things that are uh, human content-based email. There's also the ability to filter on media detail 
um, things like such as headers, uh, email. Uh, these are the interesting things. And so these are the things that potentially are uh, not that that fall outside the 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 encryption protections. Um, uh, and then of course all the content uh, within or f within the filters. Um, so these are so the best commercial filters get up to maybe 99.5 percent and the davis is a little worse than that and we're of the opinion that at least analysis of uh, stage three and four are already an invasion of basic rights and sh you should be informed about it afterwards. Um, of course, the services see that slightly differently. So let's, um, you know, let's do some, some, some calculations. And uh, lawyers often say that the law doesn't calculate, so let's do that for them. So um, we have roughly 10 million peak flows per second. Average 6 million peak 10 million. That's uh, almost 500 billion connections per day. And of course, if we have, and, and then that's just the connections. That's not multiple metadata in one connection. That's connections per day. So if, you know, if we have 99% filter quality um, or 99.5, but perhaps they have the best, and I don't know where from, but let's say they have the best 99.9%. Um, that would still be um, half a billion connections that are just going to be um, classified wrongly, where um, basic rights are violated, which shouldn't happen. Um, let's say 20% are interesting, email, chats, messenger services, etc. Let's assume also that 1% of, of, of the data um, is being um, retained. I can't tell you what it really is, but let's say it's 1%. And then we get down to 1 million connections uh, that would be, just at the DE6, that would be classified wrongly. Um, the, the, of course, um, People who are affected by this are supposed to get in, informed about it, um, but there's no budget for it. Um, so when we violate these fundamental laws, there's a, there must, there's a requirement to look at it uh, or to to announce it or to, that it's violated. There, there must that we must there must be an, an announcement, and it's been required that we we announce when there's been a violation of the G10 rule. Uh, in every law, it should say specifically this is limiting the effect of uh, this basic right um, that that there is, and this law doesn't do that. And whenever there is a um, violation, um, the G10 Commission should um, deliberate and decide whether uh, that person is uh, informed or not. And if you do not inform them, you have to check it um, again. You have to deliberate again. And you can't say, no, we're not going to inform them. You can only say, we're going to postpone the information. And if you, only if you uh, postpone it for five years can you uh, delete the data and not inform them. Um, uh, but how do you do that in m over a million cases? And even with the low, low amount of cases that we have right now, I don't think you can do it with zero euros budget. So that's a bit of a problem. And then there is, interestingly, a, a, a law that does not allow any um, basic... Um, sorry, I missed that. Okay, so the scientific service... Um, said, no, no, you can't do that, but it was still um, still uh, passed. 
and trust might be misplaced, as you can see, um, as um, a report documented 18 um, uh, important um, violations and 12 official um, complaints, and uh, concludes that the BND is uh, illegally um, retaining and uh, analyzing uh, systematically um, person-related data. And the data protector is complaining about a missing understanding for uh, missing um, understanding of the awareness rights. of the fundamental rights and the function of the protection protective service of the fundamental rights. So it's, it's unclear whether it's going to be, uh, the data will be destroyed or, or they'll just stop additional collection. So uh, unfortunately, uh, it's difficult to tie this to removal of the data. So the scientific service is looking at this very critically. All the experts are looking at it very uh, critically. But the Great Coalition thought this is a wonderful law with uh, uh, should be a role model internationally. But of course, we've got the first lawsuits um, at the Constitutional Court which Amnesty International is doing and more are being prepared at the moment. And um, we also informed the Secret Service that as soon as we get the first order based on that law, we are going to sue and um, are going to uh, get this stopped accordingly. Well, thank you. If there's any need, I will also be answering questions. Many, many thanks. So, so there's a possibility for questions now. Uh, one question from the internet. So I'll um, raise this one first. Also, in so, so can. Uh, can you t can you tell apart um, uh, virtual embassies uh, online? Uh, can the D can DKX discover this? No. Um, the question is, um, if you have digital um, foreign countries, can you also have digital embassies where you can do things that you aren't that that you could do on a regular embassy? Um, slightly more seriously is the question. Um, can we um, ensure that certain sensitive um, jobs are not going to be scanned, like journalists, doctors, lawyers, and how would we ensure that? And the um, answer is that in this current law, this hasn't been looked at at all. In, in the case of Germans, you're not allowed to look at it. You have to delete it immediately. So. Um, the answer to the question, perhaps, let's look at the, the, the uh, data retention laws. Um, Hotlines and so on and so forth. But for what I say, ärzte, journalists, and so on, we can't provide the list, and we have to wait first the the um, Dienste bei der Auswertung dann feststellen, dass sie diese Daten nicht weiterverwenden dürfen. The services, as they are analyzing the data, has to find the data as they're analyzing it and realize that it applies to a doctor, journalist, etc., and then they have to delete it and may not use it any further. Question from microphone number one. Have you in the case of the drug of your claim, the Ausleitung is suddenly eingeschränkt? That's what we have did you, um, for leverage, already, as part of your lawsuit, limit the um, extraction of data towards the services? We tried that, um, and but the trouble is that technically, um, well, what they did was that once we have a lawsuit, you're supposed to stop it, but a judge can then immediately decide that while the lawsuit is ongoing, you still have to do it, and that's what happened. So we tried, but we were stopped. So thanks, thanks a lot.
and this for this talk which really underlines what terrible laws are being passed right now and as uh, as a complement to the question we've had so far um, the lawsuit of embassy uh, the, of amnesty is against the old law and um, they're currently preparing, and it's not um, financed yet, and on, on freiheitsrechte.org you can um, help us gather money uh, to prepare a constitutional complaint against the new law. That's freiheitsrechte.org. I would like to remind you, um, it's supposed to be questions only, but do donate. I mean, we do want to support this. So, question from Mike number two. So, thanks. <laughs> One question. So, have you considered uh, using the um, officer's uh, duty law in the case of somebody acting obviously um, uh, Fahrlässig um, and, and going after the officers. Uh, no, we're an economic. Um, we're, we're an economic organization, and if society decides that there needs to be some um, surveillance, then so be it. But it's really important to us that this has a legal basis and that this works correctly and otherwise it's not okay and the uh, nailing that to a person and acti acting against people who are doing this individuals is something we really don't want to do you'd have to go after the 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 agencies and the um uh organizations um and we really don't think that it would help us um in society to to go after single people. Legally, perhaps it would be a tactic. Practically, we don't think it would be helpful. So one more question from the internet. How do you know that encrypted data um, that there was more encrypted data in the internet. Did you do like um, uh, uh, random samples? I don't have to do any analysis, any big analysis. We just uh, see that there is more HTTPS and that's immediately visible without random sampling or anything. And of course we see that at the node. I'm, I'm, I can do this publicly and our um, our members want this because they want to have port analysis and traffic analysis for their own ports and their networks and so this sort of traffic analysis on a completely anonymized basis uh, the metadata and, and peering data is, is completely apart from that that's you know in the responsibility of the carriers of our members and we provide them with that service number five please um, gab's jetzt eine trennung zwischen deutscher und ausländer so was there the distinction between Germans and foreigners, and then thinking of people with uh, double citizenship, are you like both? Very good question. So, first off, it's being treated the same whether you're German or a foreigner in Germany, technically. Um, but abroad, um, the law says Germans abroad are not allowed to be surveilled. But um, we can't really differentiate for EU citizens, but for Germans we can. No idea how. And I don't know either um, double citizenship. The law says Germans, and I'd say 
if you if you have a German citizenship, that applies. They can't um, uh, take that away from you. But then again, I'm not the legal expert. I've got a technical question. So I do trace route from Munich to Berlin, and it goes via Frankfurt, and then it takes an extra 10 milliseconds in Frankfurt. Is that the G10 filter? I'm going to say, no, 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 you didn't do that on our um, infrastructure. That's You're not going to get 10 milliseconds. It's it's below millisecond resolution. Um, you're not going to see it if, if, we, if that would happen. Um, however, we would exfiltrate uh, this data. Um, it would be completely transparent. And none of what we would do would, would be visible to you. And, uh, of course, part of what law enforcement wants from us is that if they uh, want surveillance, it remains invisible because the target isn't supposed to know about it. Yet another question from the internet. Let's fragen, ob uh, DKIX International AG nicht die gleiche Entscheidung wie der Betreiber von Lava betreffen müsste und den Service schließen, weil die Nutzer einfach nicht mehr schützbar sind. Um, wouldn't, doesn't, shouldn't the E6 um, uh, take the same decision as the um, provider Lovabit and just shut down the service because they cannot protect their users any longer? Interesting question. But first off, our customers aren't the same users as you mentioned. Our customers are carriers, and we don't actually know who the uh, specific users are behind that. And so as an exchange service, we, we're kind of apart from that. And we're trying to clarify some of that. And that's the decision. I think we'd have to talk about this and take such a decision after we lose in the court. Right now, we're still heavily hoping that we win and that we can stop all of this. And this is my personal opinion, but this is a discussion that you could only have, it would only make sense to have after we lost and we're being forced to do something that is, is wrong and um, illegal. But it doesn't change that there would be connections between carriers and if those run through a node in in another country, it would just get worse. So this is about something similar. What's the consequences you, you would face if you would just refuse to cooperate and not do this surveillance? Well, as CEO, you'd be in big trouble because you might be put in jail for that. And they can fine you with a couple of hundred thousand euros per case. And if there is a, it is a lawful order, it's really hard to refuse something that a, a court orders. And I mean, that's a question you always have to answer, right? I mean, if, if a court says something, you either follow or you get fined or go to jail. So, I mean, we have to first clarify what the situation is and then we have to decide and we have to talk to our members and, and the carriers and, and, and ask them, you know, how do you want to deal with this? And so I can't really answer that question. Final question from the internet. Uh, euphemistically put, uh, what are the limits um, for the D6 to use that data? Well, we cannot look at contents, we cannot... I mean, the maximum that we do is this sort of statistical analysis of traffic data where we don't really save anything. And it would be completely not okay if we if we looked at anything more than that, and we we would we would break many many laws and violate basic 
uh, rights. And I mean, those are the legal limits for us to do that. Technically, well, any network admin, you know, it, theoretically we can copy all the data. But of course, that's what the law is for. I mean, yeah, the law prevents us from just copying everything. And there's fairly high, uh, punish fairly strong punishments for that. So, sadly, this is where we run out of time. We hope you've learned a lot. And um, so, please, one more ra big round of applause for Klaus Landefeld. And uh, thank you for your attention from the translation team as well. Uh, this was...